what's going on everybody fetter here from 3d print sos welcome back to the channel and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at this this is the fl sun super racer and this is a delta style machine this is a whole different animal a delta style machine essentially has three arms that meet in the middle where the hot end is the bed is stationary and it prints going up starting from the bottom and it should be mesmerizing to watch if you're one of those people that likes to watch their 3d prints uh, go and, and really enjoy is just the process of it all happening uh, this is definitely going to be a watcher's printer for sure now some of the things that you need to know right away about this is how tall it is going to be that's why i set this box up this way so you can kind of see how tall it's going to be this starts just below my waist and goes all the way up above my head it's going to be a big big boy uh, so that's a, a thing you have to consider when you're buying something like this you have to have the space for it in fact if i want to keep this on my rack i'm gonna have to pull everything up because that is definitely going to be taller than the top of my uh, benchy shelf up there so just something like that is uh, you know worth considering one of the benefits of this machine uh, is that it can also work with FL Sun's speeder pad so you can take it straight to the clipper sphere uh, with, right out of the box uh, essentially because there should be profiles right on here it should be essentially plug and play so we will test that to some degree but what I like to do on this channel is show you what's inside of the box so you know what to expect when you guys buy something like this we are going to quickly assemble it and then we're going to print what's on the sd card uh, or on the file system whatever it might be just to see how they prepare you for 3d printing we're going to go over those results and then maybe we'll jump into something like this uh, i'm not going to go into you know the tuning of clipper but we'll see how it all works out of the box considering you can purchase both of these and uh, one of the reasons why i like the super racer is because of its affordable price uh, it is definitely comparable to a lot of machines in the the low mid-range price point uh, whereas the successor to this machine the v400 is more robust it's a little bit larger it's faster and is direct drive uh, i do definitely like direct drive machines i prefer them uh, but i have a feeling that with this being out for a little bit over a year i think over two years actually uh, now uh, you know don't quote me on that but there should be an aftermarket here and i believe you can make this a direct drive uh, fairly quickly now if there's a demand for a machine like this and you guys are very interested i might go ahead and get into that but like i said i think there's plenty of stuff for us to do so why don't we just jump in unbox this and let's build it right all right see you at the table oh and by the way both of these products were sent to me by geekbuying.com definitely check out their store i've noticed that, that some of the pricing for their 3d printing uh products on the on the website are cheaper than everywhere else that i have personally seen uh both of these things were sent to me by them without any kind of money exchange nothing to be said specifically at all and they are seeing this video for the first time just like you are so uh please check out the links below and hopefully you guys find yourself a really good deal on geekbuying.com thanks all right let's go ahead and unbox it i got my blade let's see what we got in the box yeah i'm expecting some pretty large <laughs> extrusions and uh, definitely did not disappoint all right we got our user manual little text large pictures that's what we like Looks like I saw very briefly a Cura profile in there. And it should definitely be supported with all modern slicers. We got our uh, little scraper. Uh, looks like a spool holder. Yep, simple metal spool holder. We have a tool bag. All right, we got the basics and looks like a hot end. Kind of a unique uh, setup here. It's almost a volcano. It does look like a PTFE tube lined hot end, however. We have some snips, a whole bunch of bolts for our assembly, and just some basic tools. Okay, looks like it does use a volcano style nozzle. All right, let me just put that back and we can move on. We have our power cable. We have a USB cable. These must be the actual carbon fiber arms. Yep, they are. These are going to be the actual arms that move up and down the axis here. Oh, wow. These are quite the units. Very heavy. Okay, everything is kind of built in already. We have linear motion, of course. We have large stepper motors. 
FL Sun stepper motors. They're branded by their own. Looks like there is a cork spacer even to reduce vibrations and sound. Interesting, can't say that I've seen that before or anything else. Oh yeah, very smooth linear motion. Uh, very large, thick belt. Definitely thicker than most. Perfect tension, looks like there's tensioners everywhere. What a unit. I wonder if all three of these are identical. Let's find out. Yep, looks like the concept is that there's three identical units, uh, which makes maintenance and production easier. So that's cool. So this looks like we have our hot end carriage. Yep. So this is going to be our carriage. Those arms, these carbon fiber arms, uh, have these ends that are just gonna pop right in there. It looks like they're already pre-greased, which is nice. We have dual-sided cooling with dual 4010 fans here. Uh, looks like it's a V6 style, V6 style uh, hot end uh, that goes, yeah, to kind of like a uh, hybrid between a volcano and a standard uh, style heat block there and a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. I believe the other one was also 0.4 millimeters. Nice little unit, actually extremely light, obviously, because it doesn't have a motor on it. Looks like everything, uh, all the plugs are, are color coded, so that should be nice and easy. Nice 40 millimeter fan here on the back. Looks like everything would be pretty easy to maintain, change, modify, whatever it is that you'd like. And here we have a uh, magnet, this is going to be for the leveling sensor that's here, I believe. So we'll have to check that out, how that works. All right, here we have the uh, dual drive extruder. Pretty standard stuff here, but this will be a Bowden setup and it's not, and it doesn't have a pancake motor. It still has a full size motor. So this thing is going to have a ton of power. That's for sure. I guess you would say that this is a BMG clone extruder. Okay, nice metal coupler, not something that I, that I see ever on anything. I always complain about these couplers. I literally hate them and avoid them any chance I get. That's one of the reasons why I like direct drive uh, machines. But this has a metal coupler. <laughs> I want to buy these. Great call on an upgraded coupler. Does this side have the same? Yeah, so on both sides of with the PTFE tube, you're going to have a metal um, coupler. I love it. I like those. We have a filament sensor, pretty basic stuff. Looks like this kind of hangs somewhere, just like that. We'll figure that out during the assembly. This is our leveling sensor. So this is going to be uh, mounted somewhere where you can just uh, you know, have this thing sitting and when you need to level, you pop this thing on. It will magnetize itself like this uh, to your hot end. You will do all of your clicky button uh, leveling. And then you'll just put it away when you don't need it. So you're not lugging around the extra weight. It's actually kind of kind of smart. I know some Vorons uh, have an automated system for that where they kind of like go and get the probe and then do their manual and then they park it uh, for when they don't need it. This one's a little bit more manual, but kind of a similar idea. We have a, a little tiny baby spool of filaments. Okay, better than nothing. I kind of like these little cuties, especially, uh, especially good for putting other samples on here when these are empty. Does that say tube grease? It does. All right, this isn't something you see with other machines as well. So we have a tube of grease, which is very nice. This is gonna come in handy for pretty much any machine. I love that they give you this. I'm not sure if I've ever unboxed a machine that has come with not only grease, but this much grease. Kudos, that's great. And this isn't even the machine that has lead screws. So that's great. They give you a cloth, they give you a brush uh, past QC. No one signed it and it's not a sticker. Okay. <laughs> uh, extra PTFE tube. We have some clips for PTFE couplers. We have, I'm assuming this is extra. Yep, because all that's pre-installed. We have an extra uh, heater cartridge, an extra cartridge style thermistor. We have some zip ties and a pin to clear out any clogs. And the, what is this contraption? This is the, oh, this is the SD card and reader. Nice little compact design, I expected something generic. All right, so the card is generic, non-branded. And the little card reader, 
Oh, okay. Well, that's another one of these things that's kind of rare. Uh, the way that this works is you slide the card on the front. Let's see, is it backwards this way? No, is it this way? Yeah, you slide the card into the USB side, and then that gets put in. Can't say I've seen that. FL Sun doing all kinds of all kinds of interesting stuff. I like how tiny this little thing is. Cool. All right, so I see the screen, but it looks like the screen is attached to the base. Uh, let me go ahead and move this box down, and I'll pull it out and put it onto the table. Okay, uh, this is the bottom of the machine, and the screen. Oh, is it the top? This might be the top of the machine, right? Because the the uh, the top uh, doesn't have the actual plate. Yep. Okay, so this would be this way. This is the top of the machine. Looks like it just bolts directly to this. Yeah, I like that everything is color coded. It looks very simple. Looks like the PTFE tube goes through this entire thing. So I'm assuming the filament spool holder is going to be at the very top of this. That should be interesting to reach. Okay, and the last thing that's in the box is our base. So it looks like uh, the glass on here is uh, secured very nicely. Uh, with metal brackets so that it does not move. Um, it looks like the, it is actually insulated underneath, which is also nice. Uh, we have our uh, 230, 115. Looks like I got to move that. Might as well take care of that now while I have it. There we go. Now we are in the USA. Okay, I kind of wish this was PEI, um, but that's okay. It should be nice. It looks like we have a little drawer to keep all of our tools, nice touch. All right, and then just, you know, the simple power button, nothing too crazy there, rubber feet on the bottom. Cool, so here's everything that comes with the box. Looks like there's some uh, pretty interesting stuff from FL Sun. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble it. I'll speed through this process, and then I'll go over what that was like. See you in a sec. One of the things I wanted to do was take the lid off for you and show you what's under the hood. We have a Robin Nano 3.1 board, fairly common. You should be able to buy these or find very similar boards that do technically the same thing pretty easily. Nice big fan right over top of all of the heat sinks. Plenty of ports to upgrade if you wanted to add a fan or things along those lines. That's all here and ready for you. And it's up, up, and away uh, for you, uh, you know, completely out of your way, which is nice. Uh, and then on the other side, on the other side, we have a pretty generic uh, power supply. It just says power supply on it, but I do remember uh, this brand and logo. Um, it's not a Meanwell power supply, but it should do the trick. And this is on the bottom of the machine. And this is probably the loudest part of the entire machine is these uh, generic uh power supplies to fairly loud fans. Obviously you can change that if it bothers you too much, but it's not that big of a deal. This is that drawer that you can uh, put stuff in. And it looks like the bed itself, which you can see the insulation uh, right over here. It has uh, properly crimped uh, connectors um, that uh, you can just remove the bed very easily from here. And the power supply is removable very easily as well. Also crimped connectors. By the way, that's something I forgot to mention here is on the motherboard, all of the connections that hold power in any way are properly crimped uh, as you can see right here so they didn't leave us hanging uh, with that everything in here so far is very enjoyable i'm digging it So there it is. It took me 32 minutes to do this uh, full uh, build. Very easy, very straightforward, uh, and was really fun actually to build. Uh, one of the things I do want to say is they have just two types of screws. Very simple, uh, and they're both the same uh, hex. So it's just some really straightforward. All of this is attached with springs. Everything is pre-greased, pre-tensioned. This is a very well uh, designed machine. 
um, and it just it feels extremely robust uh, and it builds confidence almost instantly. Um, this little sensor that attaches here uh, to, to the front, it just connects right here to these connectors. Everything is color coded, so easy, very fun build. Uh, and you kind of get to learn how this thing works as you build it. Uh, it's very fun to play with already, and we haven't even powered on yet. So I did give it some power just now. I have everything connected. Everything's looking good. Let's go ahead and give it the first initial uh, power on, right? Let's see what happens. All right, we got like a Puma with the FL Sun logo. By the way, this is attached via that magnet that's rotatable. You can put it anywhere you'd like. Uh, I definitely really like the colors of this. I'm glad that it's not uh, blatantly white and in my face. Um, why don't I take you a little bit closer so we can both take a look at what we see on the screen here. All right. Oh, hey, everybody. All right, so here's the screen right away. Like I mentioned, I really like the fact that it's not just a bright white in your face. I love the color uh, that they chose here, the color scheme. It looks really nice. So if we dive into the info screen here. We can see our print size is 260 by 330. Uh, and the first number, the 260, that's the round plate. And 330 is the height. And the rest of the height of this machine is actually just because of the mechanics of how this thing functions. But here we see our Marlin 2.0.8 and the UI version 1.4. There might be a newer version of this firmware already out. Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't checked uh, at the time of the recording. And I have had this machine for a few months as, because I was doing construction down here uh, in uh, my room here. So there may be a new one. If you guys get this, I would definitely suggest getting a new one, uh, getting the latest from their website. I'm not going to go ahead and dive there yet because I'm going to do the speeder pad at some point. So uh, we're going to do the firmware when that comes up. But let's go ahead and check these settings here. Looks like we have our temperatures. They look, if I notice, they stay on the screen. Yep, that's nice to be able to see what the temperatures are at any point. We can turn the motors off. We can go ahead and turn our EEPROM on. This is how you get settings, essentially, that might be uh, stored to EEPROM. Uh, we have the console. Look at that. That's great. FL Sun, this is awesome to see. For those that don't know, this means that you can send any Marlin G code right here. You don't need to hook up a computer to do this. And you can essentially calibrate anything on your machine with codes that you can just send right here. Love this. Love seeing it. Uh, I wish more uh, manufacturers would do this. Uh, and they don't need to make complicated settings because they added this console for advanced users. Love it. There's an easy restore button. Looks like we have fan control. Let's go full. Yep, both fans on both sides are blowing. And lots of air coming out of the bottom. Uh, the ducts seem to be working well. Half speed, interesting. Okay, let's turn those off. Also very quiet, by the way. All right, let's go back. Let's see what's in tools. We have our heating options. Yep, we can manually heat them, cool everything down. Uh, presets for PLA and ABS. Uh, we can extrude, we can move. Very nice, movement is fast and quiet. Of course, those big steppers, linear rods, large belts, everything is tensioned and I love seeing those little, um, uh, those cardboard uh, gaskets in between the motors. That is nice. Okay, auto level. I'm not going to do that quite yet. I'll do that before we print. Here you can change the languages. You can change filaments. That, that's nice that that's automated. So you don't have to mess with the gearing on the, uh, the box. It'll You can just do it through here. Always a little bit easier with these dual gear extruders. Okay, and uh, I did put in the SD card. It goes on the top. Uh, looks like there's a folder system with you know all the things that they include. And we have a test G code. So that's what we will be printing. Uh, fantastic. Nice, simple menu. Once again, I love seeing this console. I think that is my highlight for right now. The fact that you can uh, tune everything that you might want as an advanced user. Uh, and they didn't hide that away. And uh, let us have it here. Good job, FL Sun. So far, everything here I really like. Why don't we go ahead and grab some 3D Max filament, throw it in here, and uh, see what this thing is all about. Well, and let's see what that print uh, G-code is. Always a mystery when they don't label it, isn't it? All right, let's see it.
All right, so while the machine is printing, I figured I'd show you why I talked about geek buying a little bit earlier and why I think it's important for you guys to check it out. Uh, let's go ahead and jump to the browser here. So if you have, I have it pulled up here. So if you take a look, it's going for $419 at the moment. Plus if you use the app, it goes for 417. If you look down here, it's coming from the United States. And there's also some coupons. Like for example, there's $15 uh, off here uh, for the, the current holiday that's going on. If you look a little bit closer, if you're a brand new user on the site, you get 2% off. Uh, that's eight dollars more so you can get this for under four hundred dollars where in contrast if we go to good old amazon uh the from the official fl sun store you can get it for 499 dollars there is a 30 dollar coupon but still you are saving uh some serious uh, cash by uh getting it from uh, geekbuying.com so that's why i always say don't sleep on geek buying there's definitely a whole bunch of other stuff that the site sells as well so definitely be sure to check them out just a little way for you guys to save some money if you're in the market for this machine. All right, let's go back to printing. It's doing really well, by the way. All right, so that is the FL Sun Super Racer, and I have had quite the week with this machine. I have really, really enjoyed it. If you wanted a summary uh, for how uh, this experience has, has gone for me, I'm going to be replacing one of the machines up there with this. I'm going to hold on to this machine. I haven't had a single issue whatsoever. It has just printed and done it really well, and you can see it in these prints. So first, I'd like to go over the things that I've printed in the week, all the filament uh, that we've gone through, uh, and then I, uh, as always, made a uh, cons and pros list. As you can see, it's very brief. The cons list, to be 100% honest, I really had to reach to find cons with this machine, and that that's why I'm keeping it. I think it's fantastic. So that if that's a spoiler for you, then it is what it is. The pros is a little bit longer, but even that's not the most extensive thing. You can kind of tell that the machine is a little bit outdated and that's gonna be you know, uh, relevant to the cons as we go over it. So let's take a look at some of the prints. Uh, some of the latest stuff I printed is I'm printing the honey, the wall uh, that, that kind of you put together this way. I'm gonna be mounting a bunch of tools up on this wall right over here. Uh, so that they're within reach and uh, this is a hundred percent uh you know solid pla and it takes about two actually i wrote down the times it takes just under three hours for each one of these things and i have been printing them non-stop 
and I'm gonna print a full roll of them before I start mounting them. Uh, the quality on them, as you guys saw, I tried to show you as much as I can with uh, the cl closer look. Absolutely fantastic, not a single complaint. The other thing that I printed, and you can see two of them here, uh, this was the larger uh, print, uh, is an under desk drawer uh, system. There's going to be uh, many of them going across. I plan on continuing to print these. And uh, the drawers came out absolutely flawless, uh, as well as the brackets. The brackets are absolutely solid. Um, so that's how they go this way. And uh, there's a little stopper so that when you get to the end, they don't just fall out. So nice little desk, uh, desk system. I, I'll be able to put stuff underneath the desk because right now there's nothing there. So just a bunch of really useful prints. Uh, the test print uh, for the machine fits perfectly. Uh, the quality is great. There's no stringing. There's no lifting. There's no nothing. There's no fuss with this machine whatsoever. I printed some tools that I need for our uh, Voron build, just simple stuff like uh, alignment tools for the rails, um, little spacer that gives you spacing uh, as you install different hardware on this machine. Uh, then I printed uh, this dragon with this beautiful filament. By the way, all of the other filament outside of this one uh, is 3D Max uh, filaments. So they're, this is their PLA Plus. And then this is uh, Amelin's uh, filament. And it has a glitter in it that doesn't seem to be captured by the camera, but it's just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and yeah, that's all I've done so far. Like I said, I've kind of been printing this for the past few days. Uh, the honeycomb wall. That's the, that's the words uh, that are proper. Uh, so yeah, I still have some mounts to, to print for that, which I'll continue to do. Like I said, it's just been absolutely fun. And as you can actually see, I never ended up uh, opening uh, the speeder pad. And I, I was under the impression that I was going to start using this machine, get bored with it in a few days, and then need something else. Uh, and that's when I was going to open this. But since I'm keeping this machine, uh, now that I've had so much fun with it, uh, we'll go over as we talk about the pros and cons. Is I have some modifications that I would like to do. And those modifications I think would be even better with the speeder pad. So if you guys are interested in seeing this, let me know in the comments below. As always, when you guys talk uh, you know, and start conversations with me, it's much easier to do uh, content specifically for that. Because, well, it's clear that you're interested in it. Uh, this is definitely something I need to check out. Out regardless uh, because this is just well within my interest at the moment and if you're going to be doing any kind of customization to any machine having clipper uh, on that machine would just be a win-win for for you uh, so the speeder pad the fact that it works with this out of the box definitely looking forward to that uh, a little bit later so let's just dive in to the pros and cons in our case the cons and pros like I said this is gonna be a little bit forced admittedly because I've really tried to look for negatives um, but the first one right off the bat, and it's kind of obvious, it's the size. Okay, so the build size of this machine, what is it, 260, 270? I don't remember exactly on the top of my head what the build plate is around. Uh, and then it goes up, I think, 330-ish. So it's not that large. It's about the average size of your average machine. But the way that the Delta works is it needs all of the space for the rods here uh, that kind of have this flying uh, you know, gantry system the way it works. It needs this space and it is big. This is a huge machine. It's actually going to be a challenge finding a spot for it. So that's number one. If you're looking for a Delta machine, especially of this size Delta, you gotta figure out where you're gonna put it and that's definitely a downside the caveat there and it's i'll talk about it later is you can kind of access it from every side which i think is a really nice design design decision here so let's keep going the next con here is no pei sheet and the reason why that's a negative is because the pei sheets for these things are somewhat expensive they're between 40 and 60 dollars uh they're not necessarily cheap because this is not an absolutely common size uh, with the fact that it's round and it's 270 uh, millimeters, 260. I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it's 270. Uh, for me personally, I'm going to get one. Uh, having glass is about like a two-year-old thing. Two years ago, having a glass printer, totally fine. Wouldn't have even batted an eye. Uh, but now the PI is everywhere and easy to get. Definitely a PI sheet would be the way to go. And on these machines, you can undo some screws, flip this glass over and stick the PI uh, magnet right on this glass and keep it as is. So if you needed glass or like a smooth surface, if you, in case your PI didn't have smooth, you can always flip it back and do it that way. So 
uh, that's also uh, kind of a double-edged sword there. Negative, positive, you know, that type of thing. That would be a valid upgrade to buy, PEI. Next thing is no all metal, metal heat, heat break. Once again, this is one of those things where the machine is a few years old um, and you can tell by the bed and the use of PTFE uh, liner. Now, because of that, this is going to be a PLA machine. As you guys saw what I've been printing, I didn't do flexibles because it is a Bowden setup and has a really long tube. So you're gonna have some problems uh, printing flexibles on there. Uh, even though I'm sure you can very slowly, it just wouldn't be fun. Um, uh, there are modifications for this that you can do, like direct drive, that will kind of solve that completely. Plus, uh, all metal heat brakes are very inexpensive, and this one is somewhat of a common size, so it should be relatively easy to do, and technically inexpensive, but it is a con because it doesn't come with it, and you're kind of stuck with PLA, maybe PETG, um, although, you know, it just depends on... Um, depends on what your opinions are on uh, PTFE-lined uh, heat brakes. For me, this is a PLA machine, and that's totally fine. There's millions of things you can print with PLA, and just how reliable and accurate this thing is, not bad. Here I am talking about positives and cons again. And the last thing on here is the extruder is the loudest part of operation. That's true. So years ago, uh, once again, it's kind of showing its age in that sense, is the, the boards that would come on machines, I think Longer had a similar thing, uh, some of the older machines that I reviewed uh, about a year and a half to two years ago, is uh, they would have 2209s or similar on uh, all the axes except for the extruder. The extruder would be some cheaper driver. Once again, a drop-in replacement, very inexpensive, and it would be silent, but not on this machine. You can hear it over all of the moves, over all the fans. You can hear the extruder working, not because of the extruder itself or the motor, but because of the driver itself. So just something to think about. It is showing its age, no PI, you know, kind of loud extruder. Um, uh, on the board there, and then no all metal heat break, just things like that. I did check uh, that the hot end maxes out, like if I put in 280, it maxes out at 260, so 260 degrees is the maximum for the uh, temperature on the uh, on the hot end. However, if you are going to do clipper with the speeder pad, that won't be a problem. You can just modify that figure in your configuration file and be off to the races with something hotter. Uh, and that brings us into the pros. So I'll try to go through them quickly so this isn't extremely long, but the number one thing is how fun this machine is. It's so fun to watch. Uh, it's just exciting. There's, it, you know, once the, even just the start procedure of the machine where um, it kind of like races down and just before it slams into the bed, it, it, you know, it catches and starts printing. It's just exhilarating almost to, to watch uh, and just how the machine works. It feels like a robot. It doesn't feel like a traditional, you know, Cartesian machine. So that's the number one pro. It's extremely fun and entertaining. And at the end of the day, this is a fun hobby. That's what we're here for, to have some fun. Uh, you know, even if it's a tool, having fun is not necessarily bad. So there's that. The menus and the screen is fantastic. I love that this thing mounts anywhere. I love that this magnet is very easy to adjust. You can put it anywhere, you can spin it. Uh, so it, depending on how you have this machine uh, placed in your area, you can uh, put that wherever. Uh, so yeah, the screen's nice. The menus are fantastic, very easy to use. Uh, definitely really like that interface. I think it's better than most. Um, in my personal opinion. The machine he heats up quickly, that's also true. Setting it up uh, to print is also a very nice. Uh, one thing that actually, let's do it, there will be some noise when I do this, but one of the things I wanted to say is just how easy it is to, to start a print. Uh, usually you kind of have to watch it and you know think about uh, what might go wrong. This machine has been extremely reliable. Like For example, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go to print, we're gonna to go to our honeycomb wall. I'm gonna hit print and it's just gonna start heating and it'll start printing. So apologize for the extra noise that the machine is going to make, but I have a feeling it'll be worth it to watch it uh, do this while we are going over the rest um, of, the, uh, of the pros here. All right, so the automated load and unload feature is fast and convenient. Uh, that's how I have been doing filament on this. Hit unload, it heats really quickly, does its thing, ejects the filament out of there, you take it, you put in the new one. Super easy, all machines should have it. You shouldn't have to fiddle around with any springs and touching stuff over here. It's automated and I like it. 
Uh, you can get to everything on the machine from every angle because of the triangle design, it's true. Uh, one of the things to note is there is one side though on the uh, back side back here, where I now turned the machine so you don't, see, you don't see it. You need access to that SD card unless you're doing speeder pad, uh, then you can do everything through Wi-Fi, but just worthwhile knowing that you need access to that uh, SD card. I also saw that there's modifications to move the spool down so if this was too tall like it might be for me when I put it up there uh, there's plenty of other ways to mount it uh, so the fact that you can just get to it from anywhere uh, there's no actual side uh, per se is nice and the base you know doesn't have anything sliding like a bed so what you see is what you get there with the size there's a large aftermarket for the machine, tons of printable mods, extruders, and enclosures. And we'll kind of end it on that one, is there is, you know, the machine's been out already and there's so many really high quality modifications out there that are printable. Like for example, to do a direct drive, if you have something like this LDO motor right here or similar moons or any knockoff motor that are really inexpensive, you can make a really lightweight direct extruder for this that's printable. Um, and it would it would be it would be pretty good. So there's just a lot of things you can do, uh, and, and and it's fun. So here it goes. Watch watch this. No touching, and we're going, and we're right just before the crash, and it's pretty, so exciting. And I don't know if you can hear it, uh, but the motions are f fairly quiet. Uh, but I can hear the extruder clicking away, and uh, not in the bad way clicking, in the fact that it's you know the motion you can hear it, it's coming from. Uh, the motherboard over there. Uh, other than that, I have some uh, the, some print times, like this dragon printed in five hours, these drawers printed in eight, uh, the brackets for everything, those, you know, along with all the parts printed in five, uh, the test print was 37 minutes, and each honeycomb wall is just under three hours. So, there, so it's not a slouch. Uh, in the slicer, I, by the way, I used uh, Cura. It has a predetermined slicer and, and profiles. I used that, and I think the default is 150 millimeters per second. You can probably go faster once you do some tuning, especially if you go this route where you can uh, add an accelerometer and really crank things up. You can probably get pretty fast. If this thing is going 150 out the box, you could probably double that uh, with some tuning. So yeah, I mean, I could talk about this thing all day. I think it's extremely fun. Uh, if uh, you've had an eye on a Delta and you haven't pulled the trigger, maybe check out that, uh, you know, maybe check out the links down below. I think that at $500, that's probably too much, especially right now with the race to all these Core XY machines that are doing really well. Um, but at $400, this is already really appealing for such a high quality, really well built machine. And if you can get this lower on maybe maybe uh, geek buying is gonna have some sort of sale, which they seem to have all the time, then this would be a really easy to recommend. So definitely use the links down below. They are affiliate links. You'd be helping the channel out. They don't cost you anything if you make a purchase through them. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that's all for me. You know, it's easy to get excited about this thing because it just did so well. Um, and uh, yeah, I've had a blast. I can't wait to put it into my collection of 3D printers and, and well, keep printing with it. All right, that's all for me today. And as always, I'll see you all in the comments. Later.